as a criminal needs a, a victim, a dealer needs a collector. Had sixty galleries really from all over the country. And you can really count the number of galleries significantly interested in photography that didn't show up really on one hand. So I think in a sense everybody who's involved in the industry is here. And we've had a, uh, an extremely educational weekend. I've noticed that the 20s and 30s aesthetic, aesthetic sense seems to prevail here. I don't think there's a museum uh, in the world which uh, can display this amount of photography uh, of this quality. There are some uh, really extraordinary things here. It's great to come and see all these pictures from all, you know, and the dealers from all over the world to see what other people are doing and to realize there's so many genuine lunatics in the field. It's very right. encouraging. And I'm trying very hard to find vocabulary about photography which is valid without sounding pompous and which is a little bit less aggressive and a little less acquisitive. Everything we say is, you know, shoot and capture and freeze and all these rather unpleasant words, most of which have to do with, with killing or death or acquisition or collecting and running off with. One of the things that picture does is it fulfills a need that I have within the medium, which is for staying power. I've always been most interested in photographs that could endure prolonged viewing. At first it was simply having the physical object, something I had done, made, you know, a record of having actually walked through that day. And then slowly it began to have much more power for me in my own private life and that... Nobody else counts. There's, a, there's one kind of photography and it's not true. There are 3,000 trillion kinds of photography and that's what's so powerful about it. And each one of those categories is a whole universe in itself, so... There are good photographs and bad photographs. Very good. And there's good photojournalism and good documentary and so on, and, and a lot of it doesn't work. So I think it's a question not so much of categories, but whether a photograph is really successful or not. And when it succeeds, it doesn't matter what the approach is, because the approach is highly individual and depends on the sensibility of the photographer. Anything that excites my eye, I'll photograph. I'm not formulated. I've never thought of myself as just a landscape photographer. Whatever looks good. I care what the world looks like. Although we're talking about the truth of photography and, and the reality of photography, we should also discuss somehow how photography lies in a very profound way because it never really points to the nature of what reality is. So the photographer is always looking at reality but they never question the nature of what they're looking at, so they're always dealing with the facts. But if, I, if I'm working on, on, on something that I feel that I, I have to shoot it, that as, as painful as it is, if, it, if it's part of something that I'm doing, I feel that if I don't photograph it, I, I hate myself afterwards for not photographing it, so I will photograph it. I mean, Social consciousness, uh, relatedness, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. If, uh, I, I think uh, uh, art floats above those considerations of... Uh, I don't think art has to carry a pack on its back, in other words, of any kind. It throws the pack off its back and just roams where it will. So what? I would like to see a photography market 
and marketing people who are geared towards good, forceful photography that deals with wonderful imagery, wonderful symbols, and to hell with people who collect it like a stamp. And it is, in fact, a luxury. It's, it's a great luxury. We're not seeing, uh, we're not seeing much uh, uh, interesting photography coming out of Tehran today, certainly not of the, quote, fine art per pursuit. It, it ha you have to have a certain climate. There's, there's, no, there's no mystery to me whatsoever why American photography and American photographers are uh, flourishing in the world at large. We have the, the most appealing climate. I think the American market is, let's say, five years in advance of the European market. We developed a, kind of a, a solid European market in the last, I would say, five years. But still, I think America, or let's say New York, is where the market is for contemporary and vintage photography. The function of the dealer is to sell that work. And that's, uh, that's the dealer's job in relation to his or her clientele and in relation to his or her uh, artists, the, the, the people that, that are represented by the gallery. And at the same time, I suppose you hope that the dealer has, uh, has a sensibility and a taste and maybe even strong feelings about the medium, which create for the gallery some kind of unique excitement for the people who attend it, whether they're buying members of the public or not. I think the people uh, here want to sell to people who collect photographs like stamps, like a stamp collector would uh, uh, collect one of these, one of these, and oh my god, I've got to have one of these. Tej, Brassard, Brasson, Ache, Frank. Whether the picture has primary imagery for us or not, it doesn't matter. They're buying the name and, uh, and maybe making an investment. I mean, we're, not, we're not talking about Norman Rockwell type work here. I just, contemporary photography magazines. Just smile. It's okay. Did you work, how, are you glad it's over? Are you glad it's over? It must be my good side. <laughs> one cannot pretend ever to have seen something truly until one has photographed it.